Hey, welcome back to the channel. Well, today at Terra Hill Farm, we are not making a lot of solar energy. I think you can see behind me why. It has just been like the longest period of clouds I can recall in years. It's really uh, put a damper on our solar generating. But today I wanted to go out and take a look at my first DIY original solar ground mount system. And it's been a little over a year since we built it and got it into service. And I just wanted to kind of take a look at it and point out some problems uh, that I've had and then some things that work well. So let's take a look at it. Now this was a, my first uh, ground mount I tried to build from scratch. And you may remember this one here on a video we did a while back. This system has, uh, it's done well. It's done well. It survived a tornado. It survived uh, high winds. It is an adjustable 12 panel ground mount rack that I built out of uh, six by six posts. It's done what I wanted it to do, but there's some, uh, some negatives I encountered in the design. Uh, and I just wanted to point those out. So let's take a look at those negatives. Well, first of all, you can't really see it from here looking at it, but as you'll notice, I put two by eights up on the top to mount the, the panels on and those pivot on hinges, as you can see, and those have done okay. But on the bottom, I put two by six, 12 foot two by six boards to uh, add extra rigidity and support for the adjustable uh, unistrut. And you can see if you come over here that those boards have just been struggling. You can see them bowed. See how they're bowed out? Just a lot of pressure coming on these uh, these two points per side from what is basically 175 to 200 pounds of uh, solar panel up there. So there's three panels up there, three 400 five watt panel and a bunch of uh, Unistrut. So that's putting some pressure on here and it's pushing these uh, two by six boards out. Now, had I go back, if it went back and did it again, first thing I had to put two by eights. And we can see the same thing happening here, I think. See how that's just, yeah, it's just really pushing them out. You could put two by eights here and get a little bit better uh, performance, but I really think, looking at it from a distance here, the best solution would be to just use four of the six by six posts. Let's, you know, bring that span between the vertical posts into a shorter range of maybe eight feet instead of almost, that's about 11 feet right there. So if we did that, I think we could solve that mowing problem pretty easy. It might require some redesign of, of the adjustment rails for the uh, panels, but but it'd work. You could make it work. And again, you know, none, none of this design is uh, you know, highly engineered. It's just uh, kind of put together. So that's one one issue that's come up. You know, let's see. see up there. You kind of got a little bow in there too. Again, I, I just think. Uh, after a year, I think four posts would have been better than three. That's just my opinion. But uh, let's look out here. Panels are doing fine. No, no hail or damage or anything like that. I've washed the panels uh, one time this year, in the last year. So I've used a, uh, a squeegee and a mop bucket and clean them one one year they probably could get cleaned twice a year and it'd be better uh, oh the other thing I forgot is as you see here I use 10 foot unistrut and at the end I had to splice on another 18 inches of unistrut to get the full span I had I probably could have I probably could have fit them all on there if I no I couldn't so really if I had to go back and do this again instead of using 10 foot unistrut I'd go down to my electrical supply house and I would purchase 20 foot unistrut and cut it to about 11 foot length and not deal with this, uh, this splice here at the end. I could have spliced it in the, I mean, there's a lot of options, but I just, again, it's one of those things, it's easier to do it right the first time and, and I didn't know I was gonna have the, the impact from the, you know, just the sheer weight Let's see here. You can see the same thing here. And so it's 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 making the the 
the panel, the lower corner of the panel down there tilt a little bit. Uh, so my advice is if you're going to use, you know, this, uh, these 12 gauge U strut to, uh, to support all these panels, I think, I think I would use 20 foot U you know, strut. They do make it. It's, you've got to go down to an electrical supply to get it, but. I'd use the 20 foot unit strut and cut it down to size. Uh, you'd, you'd have plenty of places to use the extra, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, and you know, the other issue that I come across is, well, first of all, this all works fine, but when you come down to this adjustment point, the idea here is that to adjust these rails, you just unlock this by by turning it counterclockwise, and then you can move the, this rail up and down. And it works, but the problem is twofold. Number one, there's two rails here, and they're both tied to the same unit strut. So these both these rails are holding roughly, well, they're holding six panels, so plus all the unit struts, so maybe 400 pounds. And so you can't adjust one rail without adjusting the other rail at the same time. So really it takes two people to do an effective adjustment on this rack. And it's pretty tricky because you've got to loosen up both these, these bolts with two people holding the rails at the same time and then adjust the rails down. And sometimes you'll have the problem where the, uh, the nut the unistrut nut on the back here flips over and it pops out and the rail pops out. Now you're dealing with that kind of pain. So again, a design that maybe maybe had a single single adjustment rail for three panels that was not tied together like that, that might be a better idea. That might be a better idea. Again, I, I didn't I didn't build this off anybody's set plans. I just kind of made a hybrid I kind of made a hybrid uh, design based on several different ones I'd seen. Again, these are kind of tricky doing two at a time. Uh, one at a time wouldn't be a problem, especially since it'd be half the weight with just one rail. So that that's that's probably a, a better move if you're designing these. As far as these hinges go, they've held up pretty well. If I had to do it again, I'd probably spend a little bit more money and do better hinges. But they don't move that much, and most of the weight is carried on that two by eight again you know four posts instead of three probably would have made it a lot more stable and and kept a lot of this bowing right here out of the picture so uh, please excuse my wire management that's i need to get back out here and take care of that but other than that i guess from a standpoint of does it work yeah it's worked well it's held up well no no big problems from wind or anything like that on the whole happy with it you can see down there i bought some more two by sixes i'm going to double up those two by sixes going across to try to take that bow out and see if that works but overall you know it's it's a nice diy but at the end of the day by the time you spent the money and did all the work something like the bright mount rack or something that's you know a preset rack with a low cost ballast anchoring system it's going to be about the same cost it's not going to be a lot different so Solar panels and racking, you know, if you're doing ground mounts, the real challenge is uh, getting the ground. I really like six by six posts. I think they're they're great. They work well with the bright mount kit because the rack can sit right on top of the post. So anyway, just some thoughts about DIY ground mount systems and what, you know, what works, what could be improved. I think this could be improved and you know, I may come back and, and make some modifications to it, but I wanted to look at it after a year and you know, just wanted to get an idea of what we could change and make it better. So anyway, that's that's an update on this system. Hey, so once again, I'm Michael, Terry Hill Farm and Two Steps from Off Grid, where we're continually trying to move to zero steps off grid. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate all the folks that have made comments in the in the videos. I hope my responses have offered you something of value. And uh, again, keep watching. We really appreciate you. Thanks.